Are we live? We are live. All right. What is up, folks? Good evening. Uh, welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. So this stream is going to be... Um, it's going to be both a channel update uh, and a live stream. So we'll do both at the same time. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Um, I endeavor to answer anything as we get to this. A uh, bit of a backstory on this image. Uh, I started this as a 20-minute warm-up sketch this morning, and I ended up obsessing over it for the whole day. <laughs> so, you know, uh, this is way more finished than it should be, but I had so much fun on it. I, I just, you know... I, I ended up, I might as well finish coloring it tonight. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so this is how I started. Uh, it's a very, you know, rough idea. I had this idea of Jean kind of uh, disassembling a sentinel, which seemed like it'd be super cool. And the sentinel is sort of coming off of off panel. So... She's just like tearing it apart. And I just really like the movement in the sketch. So so this is kind of where we went. I super duper noodled all the details. I love drawing little Sentinel tech. Um, I did this Professor X drawing like a few months back where, well, last month, I think, where I, I drew him versus Nimrod. And I really, really enjoyed drawing all the little tech bits. So. You know, stuff like that. So yeah, anyway, this is more finished than it should be. But we're going to throw some colors on it right now. And we're going to chat. Uh, so you'll see with my layer structure, I've actually kind of done some silhouettes already for the main elements. So all the sentinel parts are broken off into their own uh, layer Jean is one big layer on her own, and uh, the background has a little bit of a separation as well. Uh, and that's just going to make it easier. Whoops. Um, and that's just going to make it easier to, um, to do the color flats as we move forward from here. I'm just going to do clipping mask and start doing some quick flats. And we'll talk as we go. I really, really like this new costume by uh, designed by Russell Dotterman. He is really an excellent cover artist. He's also an excellent interior comics artist. His, his run on Thor with Jason Aaron was amazing. And you'll probably, if you haven't experienced that yet, I really recommend it especially ahead of the upcoming Thor Love and Thunder movie, which seems to be taking a lot of inspiration from that run. Um, anyway, this is a modified Jean Grey costume, uh, modified from an earlier version that Dotterman uh, crafted for the Hellfire Gala last year, this big X-Men party that happened. Uh, where they all wore these high fashion outfits. And Jean had a version of this on that was a little bit impractical. It had all these spikes on it and a big sash on the back and ridiculously high heels, but it was perfect for a party, but not so good as a superhero costume. So Dotterman seems to have updated this for more of a, an action-oriented Jean, which I think is cool. Uh, I like the little hairstyle he gave her, sort of a a cross between her big hair and her X-Men 92 ponytail. And I also, um, I also really like this long armored look on her. I think it, it really suits her super well. All right, that's the flesh tones done. Now we're going to do some work on her
hair maybe no i'm gonna work on the yellows first so let's do that uh, i'm gonna choose this i like that yellow and i'm not gonna get too picky with the colors right now because we're just on flats once we uh jump into the main colors later on uh, we can start adjusting things to look a little better uh, by the way i'm going to try to keep this stream to under an hour just to keep it short and sweet and this is probably a good time to start talking about why i've been very quiet lately i haven't been posting videos on youtube i haven't been posting much to instagram outside of like daily stories and stuff and uh yeah i've really slowed down on my my online output of of like video content and stuff like that and the reason for that is i've started working on my graphic novel uh, for the past month or so i think for the past two months I have been doing layouts, I've been doing scripts and story planning, and it's been generally like a lot, a lot of work that is not pretty or glamorous or um, all that interesting. It's a lot of me staring at the wall or working on an Excel spreadsheet with, um, with pages. Uh, broken down on one side and sort of a description of like the plot. Uh, I am plotting this out on an Excel spreadsheet because it's a longer story than I'm used to and uh, I need to sort of manage my page count so I don't overcommit. Uh, and part of the the reason I don't want to overcommit is because I would like this book to be out by this October in time for New York Comic Con, which is kind of a, a promise slash resolution I made uh, at the end of 2021. I kind of want to make sure that goes through. So yeah, I've been very quiet because of that. But I expect as, uh, as we hit high gear on the graphic novel, it's going to do it's going to be just a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to be just, a, I, I've sort of built in a video plan around it, but I had to get through this initial planning phase. I, I just can't, I can't focus on <laughs> writing a book and working on videos. At the same time, it's just my brain can't do everything, so something had to give. But it's almost, um, the writing part's almost done. I mean, the major scary writing part, which is plotting the book, coming up with a broad um, overview of everything, and seeing how everything will lay out into the page count that part is almost done which means i am actually already knee deep in the page production i finished inks on my first page this week i'm going to start coloring it and i'm really tempted to show you guys but uh i don't wanna <laughs> i don't know if it's time i don't want to spoil it yet so we'll um we'll hold off on that until uh, until I have a few more pages under my belt. I, I've set a goal for myself of like two pages a week, which I think is a good goal. Those two pages will be like full color. So it's, it's not just pencils and inks. And uh, I'm gonna be juggling that with my day job, which, you know, in, in case you don't know, I work for an art school and I really, really love it and I'm dedicating a lot of like, you know, 
uh, my heart and soul and many hours of my week to it every every week. So that's that's what's taking up most of my time. But it pays the bills and lets me work on stuff like this for free. So I think it's worth it. Anyway. So yeah, that's 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 kind of the channel update. I will be posting more videos soon. I figured in about two weeks, I should be kind of well into the the process of the whole thing. And it should be a little more comfortable and I'll have more time to YouTube and, and work on videos and maybe I really wanted to do a video on how to plan a comic and I still I still plan to do that. Uh, it's just I can't plan and talk about planning at the same time. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Anyway. All right, so we have the main flats for Jean kind of laid out right now. I'm going to put some work on her eyebrows and, and these tiny little details on her face just to get them all done. What color are Jean's eyes? I think they're green. I'm not sure. I think they're green. So I'm just going to do that. Oops. And I'm going to throw this here. It's looking good. I think it's looking good. Let's put some lips. I don't really see Jean Grey as like the type to wear lipstick, but so, uh, or if she does, it's not gonna be super. She seems like a, you know, more of a no nonsense type of lady. This should be good. Um, wait, I don't think, so I think this is that other green that I used, so we'll just do that. Her, her tiara headdress thingy. I really like that Procreate has this, you know, color palette history here. It, it helps simplify a lot of little things. Especially when you're working on, on flats like this, you want to minimize the, the color variation because you're going to do all of that later on with the, the main colors. Whoops. Whoops, what am I doing? Sorry. I errored out. Okay. Um, that looks like Jean, right? It looks like Jean. I want her skin to be slightly lighter. Right. And... Uh, We'll do that. Let's throw some colors onto the sentinel parts um, just so we have a rough idea. I'm thinking of them as kind of a purple gray. Sentinels are always purple, so I mean, maybe not. Sometimes they're magenta, or in the case of Nimrod, sometimes they're like white, but something like that. I think that looks cool, right? Look at all of that. Oh my god. I just... I went into a manic... Um, like super obsessed face. A while ago while I was drawing all these little noodly details. So it's like really Jeff Darrow. Like over rendered, over detailed. But I don't know. It's cool. I think it looks cool. So I'm going to keep it at that. And then we're going to... Now do some shading stuff. I think. Wait, 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 wait. First, let's do some. Let, let's put some sentinel lights here. 
just to differentiate things i'm gonna increase the size of my brush and get everything thrown in all right there's that maybe this thing i think You know, there's a lot of triangles in Sentinel Land, I've noticed. And I've noticed too, like Jean has a, a bit of a triangle motif in her stuff here and there. So I guess it kind of works. Let's put that here. Um, there we go. This is my uh, first time streaming on a Saturday night. So I don't actually know if anyone's home <laughs> to watch or, or whatever. But, you know, I'm going to leave this up on the channel in case um, there are a few of you who want to who wanna draw along. Maybe tomorrow on Sunday or whatever. I always, I mean, I'm usually, when I'm drawing, I'm usually watching Daniel Warren Johnson's live streams. But lately, I've been watching a lot of um, cartoonist kayfabe videos, which, you know, if if you're into comics, you're probably following them already. But they have had all these this amazing interviews with people i love like jeff darrow alex um sorry no joe quesada brian lee o'malley uh brian bolland oh my god it's been it's been nuts how many awesome people they have there uh, and i just love listening to comic artists talk it's it's so relaxing and you learn a lot while you're doing it and it makes you want to obsess over your drawing and turn a 20 minute sketch into a several hour sketch that takes up your entire Saturday, which is what this is. <laughs> I'm going to put a kind of reduced, I think this kind of magenta would work. I don't know. Let's see. I love drawing sentinels. I don't know about you guys, but like giant killer robots just they're so fun to draw. Uh, I used to be really scared of drawing tech until I noticed some artists drawing it as if it were organic uh, and and I really I really like uh drawing it as if it were you know just flowy and organic i don't think tech has to be so rigid and smooth and and sometimes you can just let it flow around like like a human being it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical either i think which is cool what's up sir joshington welcome to the stream <laughs> my first stream in a while Glad you're enjoying the progress on this. Uh, yeah, I've had a lot of fun drawing this today. And I haven't posted on Instagram in a while, so this is also going to be nice to, to post on Insta. Like, seriously, my whole life has been... I mean, my my not my whole life, but like my free time, all my free time has been subsumed by the graphic novel. Which I really want to be good. You know, the story is uh, a little bit of an autobiography. Uh, an, an autobiography. I can't. I can't pronounce it. Autobiography. There we go. <laughs> it's a little bit of an autobiography um, based on my life growing up in Manila, and um, it's kind of a, a a love letter to to comics. And I know that sounds like a big 
big idea and yeah in a, in a way it is because i've set myself up for a lot of work but i think it's gonna be such a good story so i i, I just had to i couldn't resist so that's the story i'm gonna work on my big challenge is keeping it short because i want to be able to finish it this year my first draft um clocks in at about 200 pages which I mean, so I, I can I can do, with, with all the work I have right now, I can do maybe eight pages a week, not colored. But that's not what I want the book to look like. So at the art quality I want, it has to be like at least... Um, uh, at, at a certain level of quality you know i want it to look kind of like this you know some of it i want it to look like this this level of quality of art and i can't do this like at the pace i want to so it has to be like two pages a week or else the quality will suffer so anyway that's why that's why i budgeted that for myself and i'm really i'm i think artists have <laughs> I think artists have a, a bad habit of many artists, you know, not all, but but many artists have a bad habit of setting unrealistic goals. Especially with comics, it's really hard to predict how long you're going to take on a page because it it varies considerably depending on what you're drawing, right? So um I'm trying to set more realistic goals, trying to think of like, okay, what is an, a goal that may be a, a little hard, but I think I can handle it. Like, even if I had a hard, hard week, I can get that in. And I think two pages is a good goal. Like, it's a good example of that. Whoops, let's put this under now. I put this under that. Boom. I'm excited for a long-form project from you. Yeah, I'm excited too. <laughs> I haven't done a long-form project since maybe five years ago. You know, it's been a long time. Um, Art Block, hey, welcome, welcome. Uh, have you tried out Magic Poser? It's helpful. I have not tried out Magic Poser. I have not heard of it, actually. Is it like a... Um, is it one of those 3D model um, apps? where you can you have a you know a, a posable 3d model uh because i have been interested in trying some of those apps but i've just never gotten around to it uh sir joshington says i struggle to do two pages a week with my current project dude <laughs> you and me both I think, you know, I mean, in an ideal world, we wouldn't have to pay the bills and we could focus completely on our art, but I am not yet at that point. I think many of us aren't, and we just have to kind of make do with our schedules and do the best we can. But um, like I said, realistic goals, right? Try to... Realistic goals, but also non... But, but also challenging goals. You know what I mean? I can do two pages a week. Um, I plan to try to overshoot that. But um, on a hard week, I predict I will want to do zero pages. But if I push it, I still, I think, I'll be able to push out two, right? That's my hope. That's my hope. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I have... March, April, May, June, July, August. I have about six months to finish. Um, and the reason I need to finish it in, in, in by August is I need about a month's buffer for edits, for working on the cover, and for printing. Um, 
you know, that's that's going to be tricky. I don't know if I'm going to have typos or, you know, color issues. I'm going to have to, I plan to print with Mixum. And, you know, it's kind of a, uh, a self-publishing thing. I don't know if I'm going to do a digital version or, you know, put something up online because I know uh, a bunch of you guys who follow me are not in the U.S. And, you know, I want people to read it if they can. So I don't know. Part of me is thinking... Maybe I should start a Patreon and just post it there as I finish it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I do a Patreon? <laughs> it's just so much... Um, I'm not sure I like this white. I, uh, it's just so much work. Extra work. I don't know. I don't know if I have the bandwidth for it. Let's see. I'm trying not to overload myself. I think... I like a lot of artists too. <laughs> I'm the type of person who tends to overcommit uh, because I, I, I tend to overestimate what's possible. So I'm trying to, to be an adult and, and you know, um, recognize my limitations or anticipate limitations, you know. It's never going to go as perfectly as you think. Oh, I really like this sort of pastel -y sentinel color combo. It reminds me of... um. There was a Marvel Tsunami book that was published in, like, manga size. Uh, it was called Sentinel. And it launched uh, around the same time as uh, Runaways by Brian K. Vaughn. I forgot who the team was for Sentinel. But it, it was basically, like, a kid with his giant robot Sentinel. And, I mean, it was like Iron Giant. But before Iron Giant came out, you know, this was... This was before Brad Bird's movie was released. And, and I, I kind of remember the Sentinel on the cover had this color palette. I may be wrong, but I think this is what he was wearing. This sort of pastel -y purple. It's just so endearing. I mean, I think my favorite Sentinel is the good Sentinel from Here Comes Tomorrow. Uh, which is uh, the final arc on Grant Morrison's new X-Men. His name was Rover, and he was super, um, super loyal to this human kid. It was a really nice boy in his robot story. I really enjoyed that. Now that I'm looking at this, I think... Ah, I'll just keep going. I won't overthink it. Whoops, am I on the right layer? Um, Art Lock says, yes, it's free on the iPad for now. It's helping with my manga. It's an app. Uh, I will check it out. Or maybe I'll just download it now. Art Post Tool, get. Let's see if I can face ID this. Whoops. Um, uh, I'll do that later. I'm not sure I can. I have to look at a document for my for my password, and I don't remember it right now. So I'll look at it later. Uh, Sir Joshington says I had several weeks of zero pages. Momentum can be a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so I completely agree. Um. My feeling with a long-term project, any long-term project, whether you're like planning to, um, you know, working on a graphic novel or you're planning to run a marathon or, or you're starting a new diet or whatever, right? Um, I don't know. It's different for everyone. But what works for me is being able to drop in on it every day, even for just 10 minutes, and that's kind of what I've been doing with the, the graphic novel. I've been popping in um, a little bit every day. And, and you know, my, my, my other stuff, my, like this YouTube channel and, and um, my Instagram have suffered uh, because of that. 
but I think it's worth it. You know, you you gotta make some trade offs with your time to to, you know. I eat. I don't know. I I feel like I'm not Superman, and 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 you're probably not Superman either. Uh, so just be reasonable and be kind to yourself, right? Don't don't overburden yourself if you can help it. Um, I I think the the bonus of setting a realistic goal. You know, even if you're softballing yourself a little bit, is that you can have a little win here and there. So maybe if you can't even hit one page a week, you know, break it down further. Maybe, maybe do a few panels a week, right? That might be better. Yeah, daily is really ideal. I honestly think if you can find a way to make it daily, even if it's not like a whole hour per day, even if it's just like, you know, 20 minutes a day, uh, that will improve the work, I think. Because, you know, there's something to be said about momentum, really. Momentum, you know, it, it is what it is. Once you start, you get faster as you go. But if you stop, you have to build up all that momentum again. So, yeah. Even if it's 20 minutes, I think it's going to help a lot. Um, art block. We've all been there. I believe it's worth a trade-off for your schedule, by the way. I hope so. I hope so. So, I mean, I... <laughs> The channel's name is Comic Booker, right? I gotta be making comics. Otherwise, you know, what is this? This is this is just a fan art show. Um, and I have so many stories. And this story is so important to me because it's, you know, it's about, about my family. It's about a little bit about um, uh, what it was like growing up in the Philippines. And, oh, oh my God, I'm making it sound so boring. <laughs> um, this is... Uh, <laughs> It's also got action and monsters. It's got vampires and superheroes and, and all this crazy other stuff. So it, it, it looks dope. It's, it's wild. Oh, maybe I'll show something. Fine, I'll show a little bit. This is a, a character in it. And um, yeah, he's very important to the plot. And this is another character in it also very important to the plot uh, and here are some some sketches of some of the characters in it yeah it's the font tests and these are layouts the layouts look like this I don't know that it's gonna be very legible to you guys but anyway I have one page fully fully penciled and you know uh, inked also and I endeavor to color it and finish the second page by tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Huh. I mean, I, I, I want to do a video too, talking about the, the, you know, the project and stuff, but we'll see. Anyway. I hope y'all are drawing right now. That'd be super cool. And um, just a reminder, if you draw anything um, while watching this or, you know, um, while hanging out please do tag me on instagram i love seeing what other artists come up with uh during these streams uh, i really do it, it it gives me you know it really motivates me to keep to keep making videos and and you know because uh, you know the, that's what we've got you know we've got each other as a community of artists and if we can just like help inspire and push each other to keep working on our stuff you know i just think more good stuff will come out there you know too many projects are dashed on the on the rocks of real life um i am rooting for you i am i am rooting for you too and thank you for rooting for me well uh we are rooting for each other yeah i don't know um, if any of you are planning to go to New York Comic Con this year, but I'm really excited because I really want to have my first table experience there. Um, it would be great to meet some of you in person. So, 
Anyway, that's me saying it out loud. New York Comic Con is not till October, but I'm saying it now in case, you know, I know it's not easy to travel, especially with all this COVID stuff. Um, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that things will, you know, ease up by the end of the year. Okay, I'm going to pause on all these little sentinel flats since we are at the halfway point and I want to get some rendering in so I'm gonna start working on shadows and lights and maybe choose a background color what do you guys think what do you think would work as a background color let me know in the chat if you have an idea Because this white is like really oppressive. I want it to be a little smoother. That looks cool. It looks like the Sentinel is wearing sneakers. <laughs> like robot sneakers. With this coloring here. I think that's dope. I would hate to have to draw this over and over, but you know, it really looks cool as it is right now, just. Okay. All right, all right, let's get some, let's get some renders in. Oh, wait, 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 let's put, let's put a ye little yellow there. Let's put some yellow here. Maybe some here. I feel like this should be yellow, so we're gonna just throw that there then. Oops, what's going on? Um, we have suggestions. I'm inclined to say pink because her power is usually pink, but I think something darker. Um, hmm, you have a point. I kinda wanna do sparkly effects with her power. Um, so maybe not pink for the background. That way the pink has something to play off of. Um, is it too on the nose to use gray? Actually, no, it's not. I think gray is a good suggestion. You know, the, the great thing about gray is, you know, like all these saturated colors is, makes the more saturated colors pop, so... Let's look at that. Um, I think the value is off. It's too light. It's blending in. So let's make it a bit darker. I like to go into hue, saturation, brightness, and then mess with all these sliders down here to get the color I, I like. So I'll just go with this gray. And just for funsies. Yeah, because the darker we go, the more the, um, the light bits pop. Like, especially if you're going to throw some sparkles with the power and stuff. So I think it's good to go dark. Uh, let's see what it looks like with, with slightly different hues. Like a little bluish hue is kind of cool. No pun intended. Can up the saturation on that a bit. Mm, I think I think that'll work. Uh, maybe a little darker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 I think that works. Yeah. 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 We'll go with that. I, I, I'm. I'm in danger of overthinking this. Uh, and let's change the ground color too while we're at it. Oh, so let's lower that. Right now it's kind of a blue. I'm trying to think of a good light source for this whole thing. Mostly because I want to throw some lights on here. Um, some dramatic lights, so I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what comes out. All right. Boom. Okay, Gene, let's, uh, let's get into it. 
let's get into some colors well renders right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use a dark dark purple and i'm gonna start working in the the shadows um, i find it's easier to to work the shadows first rather than the lights usually there's more shadow than light anyway um, so i'm gonna start ghosting that in there and once i have that down i'm gonna mess with the layer i'm gonna make it a multiply layer and i'm gonna lower it to about 33 percent maybe even just 30 33 there we go and that'll make the shadows blend better with the thing um, the the style of coloring I'm doing right now um, is kind of a hard edged flat style of coloring, uh, more like a cell shaded look, and that's really good at the start. At least it really works for me to start with that, um, and then later get into like more blended shades. Uh, you know, I'll use the smudge tool later on to soften some edges here and there. Uh, it's just good to start with um, with a sharp tool so that you can see the edges properly, see if they're working. You know, sometimes uh, it's very tempting to 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 use gradients immediately and uh, smoosh uh, and blend everything immediately, but if it doesn't look good as like big blocks of shapes, it probably won't look good blended. So anyway, yeah, long way of saying. That's why we start this way first. And I guess the light is coming from the upper right. I'm thinking based on some of my inks here it looks like you know that would make sense so that's what i'm gonna work with for now you could change later on we'll see how i feel i'm trying to attack the big shapes first before i go into like smaller finer details but It's very tempting to, to overdo it. Well, that's what's great about the iPad, right? Even if you overdo it, you can just undo or you can just undo or you can just erase. But I'm trying to be efficient. Or flowy hair. Here's another thing, you know, I really have to resist the urge to draw every strand of hair. I, seriously, I get I get so OCD. <laughs> when I see something like this, I wanna just like fine line every strand. It's it's ridiculous. And it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good if I do that. It's it doesn't it really leave any room for colors, it doesn't imply the light, it just becomes this graphic sort of flat looking thing. So, you know, I really try to stop myself from over rendering. All right, that's looking good. Let's throw some shadow here, not too much. And honestly, the, the rest of her, the, the dark parts already don't, don't really need much shadow, I think. You know, the inks are doing all the work for me there. Um, Mark99. Hey, what's up, Mark? Welcome to the stream. Um, I'm glad you love her post. I, I love her post too, honestly. I just, I love when psychics kind of emote, you know what I mean? With their hands and stuff. It's, it's so good. It, it, it just, the, I focused a lot when I was drawing this on, on her hands, on getting her, her, the motions right so it looks like she's really trying to control um what's going on and i think it's going to look better once i throw her power effects and stuff in but 
we'll get there. Okay, okay. So now we are um, gonna work on this stuff. The trickiest part about this costume is Dotterman made this kind of breastplate metallic. And metallic things don't shade in the same way as other things. There's, they're harsher. I, I just want to say they're harsher. The lights and the shadows are harsher on metallic things. Um, you have like big, big swatches of light on it, um, which I think are called speculars. It's very clear, and you'll see it if you hold up anything metal around you and you put it near a light or something the light will almost perfectly reflect on it like a mirror uh and and that's uh you know the, those white bits are, are speculars uh, i don't think this is as shiny as like regular metal but it still has to be a little shiny so i'm gonna work on making it something like that It has to kind of look like it's reflecting the environment around her, if you know what I mean. Um, which, if, if, if you were to 3D render this out, it would be a whole, you know, you would need a lot of processors to, to render out metal reflecting its environment. Because that's a lot of work. Uh, but all we need to do for this drawing is imply it, right? Because the, the imaginations of the viewer can do the rest. Okay, I think that works. Okay, let's throw that in. Uh, and then a bit more here, down here. Not too much needed. Just enough. You know, the more I work on it, the more I love this costume. It's really... It's really freaking dope. <laughs> it's like a, a sort of Nike Jean Grey, you know, very sportswear. Um, okay. Now we're gonna throw some of those aforementioned speculars. And notice, um, I mean, I say this a lot. I think I've said this in the last stream, but um, I'm using clipping masks. And I recommend you guys use them too, because they're super cool. Once you have the base silhouette set up, look how, every, how much easier it is to have everything lay out over it. Mark99 says, man, I wish I could draw hands. Dude, hands? are hard <laughs> um hands are probably next to the face the hardest uh part of the body to draw um, and that's because you have so many moving parts i think there are 32 bones in the hand alone it's a lot it's a lot um but you know, my teacher always said this, when you're struggling to draw hands, take advantage of the fact that you have your reference always with you, right? <laughs> you have hands. Um, so when I'm drawing, when I'm drawing something like this, for example, sometimes I'm, I'm, I look like this. You know, I'm, I'm sort of like positioning the hand in front of my face to see how the foreshortening will go, you know, or if I, if I'm depending on, you know, it's going to be different depending on the, the gesture that they're putting together. But I, uh, I, I use my own hands and I recommend you do the same, you know, do, do you use them as reference? Um, don't be so hard on yourself to, um, to draw everything out of imagination. You know, I think, uh, there's so much, I guess there's, there's, I don't know, you might not be like me. I, I grew up reading comics, thinking that all these beautiful drawings that I would see in front of me were drawn completely from the imagination without reference. Uh, 
and that's just false. <laughs> that's just false. I mean, you see, like, someone like Kim Jong-gi, um, and he is probably the, the, you know, the omega level mutant that makes all the other mutants feel lesser, you know, he's the omega level artist, because his visual library is just, it's, it's, my visual library is like a little bedside table with a few books. His visual library is like the library of Alexandria. You know what I mean? It's like Google. <laughs> he can just like think and then it's there, right? Um, and, you know, every time we try to draw from the imagination, which is, you know, we should always be, be trying to do, um, especially when we're practicing, uh, we're exercising that visual library. But, you know, when it's time to execute something important to your story or whatever, like, don't be afraid to use reference. And every time you use reference, you're absorbing it. So it, it goes in to your visual library. You get better. Anyway. My two cents, Mark. The other funny thing I sometimes do when I'm when drawing is I uh um I have a you can't see it, but I have a mirror. Um, here in my studio in front of me. So sometimes I'll, I'll look at the mirror and I'm like, or I'm making like a, you know, puppy dog eyes or an emotional face. And it's because the story, the, the character I'm drawing for that panel is acting a certain way and I need to capture the expression and I'm trying to figure out which expression is best. Um, so I look like an idiot. But, you know, I'm using the reference I have on me, <laughs> which is my own face. That's also probably why I feel like, you know, some artists, some comics artists look like their work. You know, I, I'm thinking of people like, like Sean Gordon Murphy. Um, he looks like his work. <laughs> and I wonder if, it, part of it is because he's using himself as reference uh, when he's when he's working on stuff. So you you see his, you see kind of his face shape, and his nose in his work. Um, I don't know. It's probably not true for all artists, right? I I don't know if. Um, characters in my work look like me, but you know maybe they do. Maybe there's some echoes of it. I'm not sure how the light is going on this metal thing. I feel like it's not as good as I want it to be. But anyway, let's see what it looks like rendered. I'm going to do um, a blending mode on this, maybe vivid light or soft light. I mean, most artists recommend overlay. So overlay and then... I think that's blending okay as overlay. I'll just leave it there. Overlay. I'm just gonna do it sharp. I'll try not to overdo it down here because I want the the breasts to pop forward. And if I put too much light here on her chest, the it's gonna compete. So, a few more here, and then here, and maybe some on her hair. And um, yeah, I think I think that's looking cool. I'm just not sure about this blend mode. Let's see. Maybe if I lessen it, because it's too white on her skin right now. You know. Maybe uh, I sh maybe I shouldn't have used white for the lights. 
I need something like gentler. So I'm just cycling through all of these and seeing what I like. Maybe soft light's better. Yeah, I think soft light is the way to go. Okay, we'll just go with soft light. And I think her hair is over, over highlighted, so we'll just lessen that. Take all of that out. And just just put put a few highlights here. Anyway, I don't know what the weather is like um, where, where you are right now, but over here it's really cold. It was snowing today. So it is just a perfect day to stay indoors and, and draw. And I just couldn't help myself, I swear. I just, I started the sketch and then it was nice. I had coffee. It was chilly i was in a sweater it was just really comfortable to just keep drawing and before i knew it like a couple of hours have passed and i was noodling like little sentinel engine parts on the side um i, I it just completely took me over this drawing but you know i can't complain it's you know what's the point of 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 all this art if we don't enjoy it right <laughs> and i think this looks really cool i'm having a blast drawing this and making it awesome i probably will do i realize we're running out of time because i i promised i would just keep this to an hour but i will probably keep working on the colors for this tomorrow after i wake up and i'll probably post it on my instagram or, or at least I'll be posting. I mean, if you're curious about progress, um, and uh, that the progress on this piece, uh, I I posted a bunch of progress videos on Insta on my story, so you can check that out, like how I drew it. And I'll probably post the final drawing there when I'm done, probably tomorrow. I need to get this out because um. As I said, I'm working on the graphic novel and I can't spend too much time on, 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 you know, fun stuff like this is great, but I can't publish it. <laughs> this is just for, um, this is just for my joy. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I kind of want to put, I know Sir Joshington mentioned pink a while ago, so I might, I might want to put a few. So I'm thinking, right, I will draw the power effects with a light pen, maybe. Procreate has this, um, has this light pen, which comes with it, which is really cool. I use it. It, it it works great on a dark background, so, you know, um, but look at that. Oh my god, that's so cool. So I'm thinking I'm going to use a thick like magenta, something like that. And then, you know, use that to draw out her, her power effect. Right? I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, we'll 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 see. We'll see what I come up with, but I might even, you know, I don't know. It might be too much. I don't know if I should um if I should put the power effect over the sentinel parts. Would that be super cool or would that be too much? It just would look so cool. I don't know. Anyway, this this sparkly light thing is dope and and I'm I'm going to use it for the final thing, but I'm going to try to make sure the base drawing without the special effects looks really good first. Uh and then we'll do that. You don't want to abuse special effects like color holds and stuff like this if you if you can. Uh, but yeah. 
that should be cool any case uh i think uh i think i'll leave it at this for now i hope you enjoyed thank you for being here and drawing along with me i really appreciate it i hope you were inspired and you got to draw some cool shit yourself uh again make sure to tag me if you you know if you post any of the stuff you draw on the stream i love um i love seeing uh my fellow artists works it's super inspiring and uh yeah uh, I'll post video soon, uh, as soon as I... I'll post an update on the graphic novel soon. Um, thank you for being patient. Um, I will post. I'm so excited for that. Uh, anyway. Oh, yeah, Mark, uh, how do you get the brush to glow? It is a default brush in Procreate called Light Pen. You want to go to the Luminance set here in the brush library? It's right there. And then you just have to choose a color, which will be the background color. Um... I chose magenta because that's, you know, more jean. Pink magenta, right? Uh, but you can choose whatever you want. Uh, and it'll look good. Like, if you chose a green, it would look like that, you know? Or a blue. It would look like that. Oh, my God. I could just draw with this pen all day. It's so fun. Uh, but I will stop now. <laughs> anyway, uh, have a great weekend, guys. Uh, ciao.